Good morning. Welcome to St. Mary Ann's Episcopal Church. Happy New Year to, to all of you who are at home and watching this service today. This is a little bit different for us. I've, I've not done a New Year's Day service here at the church before. January 1st is uh, the eighth day after the birth of Jesus. Today is the feast of the holy name of, of our Lord Jesus. He was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And under the law of Moses, all male infants were to be circumcised on the eighth day after the birth. It was also customary at this time for family and friends to witness the naming of this child. This major feast is always celebrated the eighth day after the Christmas season. The designation to the feast in honor of the holy name of Jesus is new to the, our Book of Common Prayer in 1979. It was traditionally celebrated as the Feast of the Circum circumcision but in uh in the middle ages it was it was changed to the holy name of jesus the name jesus is from the hebrew name joshua or yeshua yahweh is salvation yahweh will save devotion to the holy name of jesus is particularly derived from philippians and in, in chapter 2 which states that god highly exalted jesus gave him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bend in heaven and on earth. Our hymns today are centered on Jesus and his holy name. My message will be a message of hope for the new year. We welcome uh, Karen, who will be our lector uh, for, for today and assist me. And also we welcome Ray and, and Hoel and our, our wonderful altar guild of Lee and Kathy, who are here assisting us today. We thank you for your, your time and for your patience. With that, we'll have our opening hymn this morning. Our service will begin on page three in our bulletin this morning. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his King. Now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. From you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll say it together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest in peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's pray together our collect. Eternal Father, you gave to your incarnate Son the holy name of Jesus to be the sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart, we pray the love of him who is the savior of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. 
Karen will now begin with our readings. Today, our first reading is from Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Today's Psalm is Psalm number eight. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet all sheep and oxen, even the wild beast of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Today, our second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. If indeed, when we have taken it off, we will not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan under our burden, because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. 
when they saw this, they had made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. If you're at home, please put your feet up. Where there's life, there's hope. That's a, that's a deep truth. Deeper, however, is the converse. Where there's hope, there's life. We humans are hoping creatures. We live very largely on and in our anticipations, things we know that are coming, things that we look forward to. If the light of hope goes out, life shrinks to mere existence, something far less than life was meant to be. I don't need to rehash for all of you all that has happened this past year. We can watch it, all of the 2020 retrospectives on any television network or webcast for the next few weeks. We faced a great deal this year, in, in 2020, some of it we face together, much of it alone. Anxiety is a beast, and it's been thriving in this type of environment. Many feel we've been running around in circles being anxious, like a dog chasing our tail. There are people I know who have it so much worse. They've lost jobs. They're They've been forced to move out of their homes because they can't pay rent right here in our church family. Not to mention people are actually sick with the coronavirus and how terrible that might be right here in our church family. There are people around the world living in makeshift hospital tents being tended to by healthcare professionals in hazmat suits. Their families praying that they will make it out alive. Or those who are dying of something else entirely and can't have visitors to say goodbye in their last days alive. In 2020, I officiated at 19 funerals, most of which had two or three family members attending. I prayed with residents at assisted living facilities through glass windows. I slipped consecrated communion hosts in mailboxes and cried driving away. I prayed with people over Zoom, over FaceTime, over text messages, on cell phones and in driveways. I've been preaching to people through a camera lens and for a while outside and in person to our masked Episcopalians. Some of you may wonder why I don't tell my little joke at the beginning of the service anymore. The repercussions for all of this are far-reaching and heartbreaking. It's been devastating our Hearts feel the culmination of pain from everywhere. Secular news tells us that there's hope for restored faith in science and public institutions that societies have created to protect them from disasters like global pandemics. They say there's faith in community, connectedness, our common humanity and vulnerability. Would you agree with me if I said that this life is difficult most days and at best really challenging on other days. Would you also agree with me if I said that when life is a struggle, it's easy to wonder, where is God in this situation? Where's our hope that is not tied to science or a government institution? English poet Alexander Pope said, hope springs eternal in the human breast. But that's not all the story. For the first half of people's lives, Spontaneous hope does indeed spur us forward. Children hope to do this and that when they grow up. Teens hope to go to places and do things when they have more money. 
Newlyweds hope for a good income, a place to live, and perhaps having children. Established couples hope for the day when their children will be off their hands and they're free to cruise or tour or see the world. But what then? There comes a point at which the elderly and those who, as we say, are getting on realize, and if you're a glass half empty person, sort of a a negative person, out of all the things they wanted to do that, that they have done all they can and the rest are now permanently out of reach. Life's too short, some say, but life goes on. Today, indeed, people live longer than they once did, but the common experience for pessimistic folks is that living longer brings only bleak boredom in a diminished sense of good life as consisting of three meals a day and more television and then back to bed at night. Whether as a bodily, our bodily health fades and minds and memories run increasingly amok, any better, more enriching experiences of old age being possible is a question that secular social theory has shown itself to be unable to answer. And that's the sad news. Are you feeling bad yet? But there's good news. Good news is that the Bible appears to have an answer for short term and for eternity. So as we age, our glass is not half full, but our cup runneth over. In a word, hope. Hope understood not in the weak sense of optimistic whistling in the dark, but a strong sense of certainty about what is coming because God himself has promised it. This hope is unique in the fields of religion and philosophy. Philosopher Immanuel Kant said, what may I hope for? It's one of the most important questions that anyone could ever ask, but Kant claimed he couldn't answer it. The Bible speaks directly to it, setting before all of us who are in Christ a destiny that reaches beyond this world to a kaleidoscope of wonders, enrichments, delights, which the Bible gives the generic name to it, glory. This destiny is big and exciting, and the New Testament writers show us how they felt about it so. What is it then that we have to look forward to? Well, Karen read it in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. It sets before us in picture language that aspect of our hope, which we will counter, cancel, or commit to. This momentarily affliction that we have here on life of bad health or crippled limbs or bodily pains or minds or memories, relationships, personal circumstances, Whatever else, this hope fills us with a wondering joy that everything can be so good. What does Paul tell us? He tells we have before us a new dwelling place. St. Paul begins his unveiling of the Christian's personal hope by talking about the body. He tells us of a better body that's yet to come. We are, as humans, as we all know, embodied souls, that is, individuals, We've been given these bodies to live in and to live through a disembodied life such as Plato dreamed of, in which only pleasures are intellectual, be a far poorer thing than the embodied lives that we're actually living now. But there's a debit side, there's another side to this. Now, Paul, as you may remember, he's a tent maker by trade. So from one point of view, it's not surprising that he should picture the body in which we now live as a tent, a temporary residence. Paul is a civilized first century man, a town dweller, a church planter, a pastor when he's not actually on the road. So it's not surprising either that he should picture the better body that is in store for us as a house rather than as a tent, a permanent higher quality habitation onto which God has promised that he will one day move us into. Tents, when all is said and done, make very vulnerable living quarters. They leak, they get rain sodden, they blow away when you're trying to do a driveway communion, they drip and they rip in the summer rain when you're trying to do mass on the grass. They let in the cold and the heat and the earth all around, if not the earth inside. It becomes muddy, making the surface part of the experience. And Paul describes this new clothing. In verses 3 and 4, we find Paul negating the idea that having said goodbye to our body, we should forever 
be and feel naked or unclothed in a state of permanent loss. That's not what we want and not what we shall have. On the contrary, he said, what, what awaits us is possession of a new house, a building from God not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We shall put on this house as one puts on a garment over what one is wearing right now, perhaps like an overcoat, for, ex for example. Thus we shall not be unclothed, but further clothed by what God is doing for us. Hereby what is mortal will be swallowed up in life, he says. Paul mixes his metaphors here, and it gets a little bit blurry, but the basic meaning is clear. Whatever God's work of putting us into our resurrection bodies may involve, it's more than we can imagine at present, and it's not going to be impoverishing but enriching. It will not feel frustrating but fulfilling. It's already on its way. That's hope now, and that's given to us by God's grace. So what can we say about this positive terms in positive terms about this transformation or this re-embodiment that awaits us with Paul pictures here as being having this installation in a new house as to be our future home in the ideal new house in this world everything works perfectly nothing malfunctions in our resurrection bodies it will be the same remember Jesus risen remained recognizable so that we can be sure that when we are further closed, the same will be true of us. So that we shall know each other. We shall have joy in that knowledge. So we have hope in this new home. Now Paul comes to the climax of the contrast he's drawing between our ongoing life of faith in Christ in this world and our promised future life of seeing him and being forever as close to him as can be. He expresses the contrast, as we have seen in domestic terms. He says, we're away from the body. If we're away from the body, we're at home with the Lord. I'll still be away, but when away from the body, we're at home. Jesus himself assured his first disciples, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again. I will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Those disciples re represented all believers that would ever be, you and I and everyone. And Jesus' promise is a word to the, each one of us. Every day, every Christian may and surely should renew his or her grip on that promise in the prayer to take a long look ahead and say with Paul, yes, we are of good courage, but we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So that's the long view. But what about the short view? Because we're in the short view right now. Loved ones, let us face this new year in faith and hope and not fear or worry. Worry is the future's worst enemy because worry is the means by which we let our present lack of trust conjure up an imaginary, improbable future which plagues our hearts with fear. Worry's logic is never reasonable. It is always based on exaggerated fears. It's always destructive of our best energies because worry deceives concerning future possibilities. Worry also prevents all constructive action by sapping our strength, by plunging us into gloom that leaves us neither the light nor the wit to solve our problems. Worry plays into the very hands of disaster and defeats, defeats the very purpose for which we nourish it. Moreover, the fears that worry conjures up are rarely justified by subsequent events. Mark Twain once said that he suffered many things, most of which had never happened. Set your mind on the living Christ. Believe in him who makes your salvation sure. Nothing is taking God by surprise. Nothing. Someone once observed that there are three days a week that we have no control over, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We can't change our past, but we can change our future. Set your eyes on the risen Christ. Be ready this year for a new day, for a new way of life. My hope is that this message will drive you to God's holy book, which holds the key to our hope. Do you know the voice of the Savior? Will you hear him call your name? 
So like everybody else, I've got 10 things for you to do in 2021. There's always the top 10. First, trust in Christ. Second, wear your mask. Third, limit as you can your exposure in health compromising situations so that we can all worship together again someday. Care for others. Love God. Love your neighbor. Love yourself. Let not your hearts be troubled. And have a happy new year. To God be the glory now and forever. Amen. Please join with me as we affirm our faith by saying together the Nicene Creed found in your bulletin on page 4. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. We pray with all our heart and with all our mind. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president and for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this town of Northeast, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer due to the COVID virus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to Christ our God. 
To thee, O Lord, our God. We pray for our parishioners, families, and friends, especially today for the healing and recovery of Emma and Shannon Hoffman, Susan Molesky, and Mike Sturmel. We pray for the Holy Spirit to guide and support Alex, Emma, Jillian, and Shannon Hoffman. We pray for those who have recently died, including Margaret Ann Robertson, mother Brandy Naughton, Donald Crone, and Father Bruce Byroli. We also pray today for Bill Weisel, recovery from surgery. Hasten, O Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and grant that we, thy servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold thy Son and his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins by our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. God's peace at home. God's peace. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. God's peace. So, uh, just, just a couple of things before we, uh, before we move on. Let me come over here and grab this. Janice Flood uh, and her team have graciously put together uh, Epiphany bags. Epiphany is, is coming up on January 10th. In the, uh, there's no food in here, so don't get too excited. Uh, I looked. Uh, there are activities, there are prayers in here. There are things that, that people, individuals can do uh, by the, at home alone, or there are family uh, activities that are in here. So if you'd like one of these, please call the uh, church office and arrange to stop by and uh, pick up your epiphany bag, and uh, we'll make sure that we have one available for you. The second thing that, that we're, we're doing, uh, Ray, Ray's girls Leah and Allie have uh, put together a Bible uh, stories for children's program. We're using a, a, a book uh, for kids, little ones, Bible stories uh, for children, and they're reading them uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, we have these books are available. So if you've got children or grandchildren, uh, for it's really meant for, for little ones, please let the office know and we'll make sure if you can come by and get one of the books. They're a little bit large to mail, but we'd like you to uh, come by. Uh, Ray is involved in it. She's our narrator and Hoel provides music. They're, they're so sweet. If you haven't seen these, and I know I looked at the number of, of views on YouTube, and you, you really got to look at this. This is just, it's just glorious. It's wonderful for little ones. They can follow along in the book. Everything is, uh, the whole thing is free, so please take advantage of it. Uh, if your child or grandchild is not someone who, who comes to St. Mary Ann's, it, it doesn't matter. I want everybody to have this book who wants one. So please let us know. The, the books are, are absolutely beautiful. Uh, it is January 1st. The bishop said we were going to be, uh, we weren't, weren't going to be able to hold in-person worship through January 3rd, but I have no knowledge or any reports from the bishop after that point. So at this, at where we stand today, January 3rd, we are still uh, not able to hold in-person worship, so we'll be videoing our services. What's going to happen on January 10th, I, I don't know, but as soon as I hear, you will all hear uh, from that point. I hope we can get back together very soon because I miss, uh, I miss having uh, lots of people in our, in our church. Let's see, I think, I think we're good. Uh, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice for God.
Karen and I are in the same pod, in case you're wondering why we're so close together. Somebody said, what? That was in our marriage vows too, so <laughs> stay in the same pod. Uh, The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. For those who are at home, we have a prayer of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, I believe you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. Since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray that you come into my heart, I unite myself with you, I embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom in unending peace. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of our Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. New Year's blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
own peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.